Welcome back aboard Jasmine's Bark. No doubt you've read the many criticisms about the X and M's sailing ability. So let's check it out. First we'll go out on a light air day and fly an asymmetrical spinnaker or a sail. Then we'll head out and take a sail in a bit more wind. But first we need to get some education. While books are a great place to start, sailing is more art than science. To learn how to get the most out of any sailboat, find someone who races. These are my teachers, Frank and Sandy Norrigan, and their CNC 38 Cool Change. Around me is the advanced classroom of the Pacific Ocean off the Oregon coast. Now that's what I'm talking about. Back on Jasmine's Bark, let's get the A-sail ready to fly. A Pelican Snap Shackle is a great way to connect the sheets to the clue. Each sheet must be at least 50 feet, or twice the boat's length. Let's prep the sail. Find a corner, then follow an edge, removing twists, until you find another corner. Repeat the process until all edges are free. Keep the three corners, tack, clue, and head together, and set them within easy reach. The Mac, while big, is not heavy, so lightweight turn blocks and lines work just fine. The tack line is shackled to the forestay base. Sheets run outside of the shrouds, but over the tack line. Sailing is always more fun with a friend along. This is Scott, champion sailor, <laughs> Swift Shore 2010 veteran, Oregon Offshore 2010 veteran. Arg! And uh, most of his dental work is intact. On the river, Scott trims the sail. With wind from behind, about 15 degrees to starboard, the leading edge curves in front of the forestay. Perfect trim. If the edge collapses, sheet in. Trimming an A-sail is a full-time job. My sail is borrowed from a Tanzer 7.5 meter boat, and it's a bit big, but flies beautifully. Oh, that's good. We spot a well-trimmed McGregor sailing upriver. It doesn't take long before we come up a beam. Well, very light air, nothing beats a kite. I prefer to fly the A-sail with main up. This provides maximum sail area and light air, allows for pointing dead downwind, and should the wind come up, the main blankets the sail to make dousing easier and safer. With the boat sailing downwind, I pop through the foredeck hatch to attach the tack and clue. Be sure the sail is ran outside of jib sheets, lifeline, and bow pulpit. Back at the helm, I check that we're sailing slightly off the wind to provide a calm space to raise the sail behind the main and to allow wind to fill the sail when raised. My jib halyard pulley is on the port side of the forestay, so the sail is always raised and lowered on the port side. Back in the cockpit, sheet in to fill the sail. Flying wing and wing dead downwind presents maximum sail area to the wind. Tighten the vang to flatten the main sail and keep it away from the shrouds. To douse the sail, shelter it behind the main. I use a line clipped to the tack and clue to bundle the sail and guide it into the cabin through the hatch. Prepare the halyard by uncleating from the mast and running aft like this. Keep a loose grip on the halyard as you bring the sail down, and don't forget your sailing gloves. Heading back home in light air under main and jib, we enjoy five knots speed over ground and an easy 15 degree heel. 
Now that you've seen the boat sail in light air, let's head out for a bit more wind. This section of the Columbia River runs east to west. A sunny day with north-northwest winds, around 15 knots, is ideal for fast sailing. I'm pushing the boat hard with full main and jib. Heel is running between 15 and 30 degrees. A loose outhaul allows a deep belly in the mainsail and delivers plenty of power. I keep the main sheet a bit out to depower the main and to handle gusts. Our friend across the river is just tacked, so let's do the same. Notice that I take up slack on the main sheet and tack the jib before the sails fill, so there's no need for a winch handle. The boat loses a bit of speed during the turn and then accelerates nicely onto the new tack. Hey, that was fun. Let's do it again. Now the wind is definitely building. Heel angle is consistently 30 or more degrees. Check out the white caps and wind waves. Running downwind should be a blast, sailing flat and surfing the wind waves. Here we go. Turning onto a run, I leave the jib partly out and then sheet out the main as the boat turns on. up to about 15 knots. And as long as you don't let the thing round up, shoot out when you get hit by a gust, well, it's, that's pretty good. I'm looking around and there's one other boat out here running under May. Oh, there's a few up, up the river. But beautiful afternoon. Doesn't get any better than this. Look closely and you can see the boat's wake and speed bill as we sail down the backside of the wind waves. Now it's time to head for home. I turn back up into the wind, tack, and sail close hauled. The McGregor 26X and M models are not race boats, but they deliver a satisfying sailing experience. You probably won't win any races, but pay attention to sail trim and you'll surprise plenty of other sailors. One thing is for sure, these boats deliver more versatile fun than any boat at size, and fun is what it's all about. Be safe, and I'll see you on the water.